They're joined with Bette Ridgway today. Just, um, well, this is one of her pieces. So we're, we're so honored to have you in the gallery to get to represent your work. Um, well, first, tell me what is the most exciting thing that's happened for your art in the past, in the recent past? In the recent past, I think it's very interesting that you ask me. I've been experimenting with all kinds of mediums. And recently I've gone back to pouring, which is living and breathing for me, what you see behind me. Going back to pouring paint again, which is, for me, the most exciting thing in the world. At what point did you realize you wanted to be a painter? I didn't even think about it. I was painting when I was two, three, four years yeah. old. I lived in upstate New York in a town called Tupper Lake, near Lake Placid. Okay. And we had a little stream in the backyard. My mother gave me those little watercolors that come in a palette, and little, little circle things, and you dip them in the water. I dipped them in the stream, my brushes, and I did these little watercolors. And my mother saw them, and she knew art. She'd gone to NYU. She'd been to all the museums and art galleries, and she saw something there. And she was a teacher. And she immediately realized, we've got to develop the other side of her brain, because if she's an artist, she's going to starve. Lots of artists do starve. So she pushed math and science and geometry and physics and all that, which made it possible for me to survive as an artist. And then flipped the switch forward to 1979, I had the extraordinary chance to spend time with Paul Jenkins, who was internationally known in every major museum in the world and he was working on a project i was working with arts with handicapped in washington dc and he said one day i hear you're an artist too and i said yes he said well next time you come to my studio i want to see some fly and i thought oh my gosh so i got my courage up and the next time i was in new york and had to visit and he was doing a workshop for children he said okay where are those flies so I pulled them out. We had those carousels in a little room about this size, and he put all my little watercolors in this carousel, turned off the lights, and flipped the switches, and looked at my paintings, which were very sweet little watercolors of barns and, and rocks and flowers and trees. But he turned the lights on and said, come with me. And we walked out to his main studio. It was amazing feeling. He had a little refrigerator, one of those old ones that have a curved top. He had a bottle of champagne. He pulled out two tumblers and he poured some champagne. He handed me a glass and he clicked it and he said, to an artist. He said, you're a colorist. Stop painting anything but color. It shows him the work. Thank you. Now, and is he, was he a poor? Like, he he poured, yes, he was the first to do that. First one. And to be recognized for it. Yeah. And, you know, I think, if he were to see your work now, and he's passed, he passed in 2012. I, I think if he were to see your work now, and he were to know about the recognition you did, that reminds me of how Hayden must have felt about Mozart. I love that you're getting so much acknowledgement for mm -hmm. because it's so beautiful, and, and the amount of work that you, you've gotten from him is just. I'm thrilled. Wow, I'm thrilled, so and the gallery is so beautiful. Oh. And what you and Gabby have done to this space is nothing beyond a miracle. Yeah. It is We it provided is the canvas, you provided the color. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we're excited to have you, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Thank Philip. Thank you for visiting us at Desert Mountain Fine Art. Come see the beautiful work of that. Region.